We want to wish everybody a happy Sabbath. And we want to just give God the praise. Is God worthy to be praised? Amen. And he really is. And I want to talk about righteousness by faith and the latter rain. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and early and latter rain power. We thank you for receiving it, Lord God, and we're going to use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to be going through the scriptures because, brothers and sisters, we're living in the time of the latter rain. As Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1 says, Ask you of the Lord, rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. We are told in Testimonies and Ministers, page 512, that we are living in the time of the latter rain when the Lord will give largely of his spirit. She said we should pray earnestly and watch and pray in the spirit. So if the latter rain is seeking to be poured out on God's people, why do we have our umbrellas up? Why do we have our umbrellas of unbelief, pride, and every other sin that would shut out the presence of God? Because what happens, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1, let's turn to Revelation 18 verse 1. And I was reading a book last night that has really revolutionized my life by Pastor Dennis Smith called Righteousness by Faith in the Latter Ring. It's not called that, but that's what he's talking about in this book. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you this right here. Jesus says that you must be born of the water, but you must also be born of the what? Spirit in order to enter into the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul says that we are translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So when we are born again by the power of the Spirit of God, we are translated into the kingdom of God's grace where the grace of God is reigning upon our hearts, controlling our minds and our thoughts, our feelings and our actions. So what happens is simply is this right here. We as God's people have stressed water baptism so much to where we have forgotten about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible prophesies about the greatest time in the history of seven-day Adventism. The Bible says in Revelation 18, verse 1, And after these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Now, Ellen White says in the spirit of prophecy that the glory of this fourth angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And Ellen White said that this precious message that was given to this church by Elder Jones and Wagner was the message designed to bring the latter rain into the church. Because the Bible says in Revelation 14, verse 12, here is the patience of the who? Saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of what? But we are told in third selected messages that the commandments of God had been stressed, but the faith of Jesus had been, had been left out. So what happens is simply as this right here. These things must we do, but not leave the other undone. Am I right or wrong? So what happens is we must keep the commandments of God. But God raised up Jones and Wagner to preach this 1888 message of righteousness by faith. And we are told that this message they preached was not only what the Apostle Paul taught, but it was the same message that Jesus taught. And to where Ellen White said that if we receive this message, it will lead and manifest in obedience to the commandments of God. Many people have been trying to keep the law of God in their own power. But they have forgot the scripture where the Bible says, without me, ye can do how much? Nothing. So what we must do is we must receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, here are they that keep the commandments of God, but have the faith of whom? So this faith of Jesus is very important in the third angel's message. So what I'm presenting to you is the third angel's message and verity, which we, which we all must receive in order to be prepared for the latter rain when it's poured out in its corporate fullness. We need the latter rain in these last days. All those who are alive, who will be a part of that remnant that will give the loud cry to the whole entire world, must receive the latter rain. Let me give you a statement from the spirit of prophecy. And I read this last night. This is from the book, and it's from the book called Manuscript Releases, Volume 2, page 26. Manuscript Releases, Volume 2, page 26. And Ellen White's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we need to be baptized every day by the Spirit of God. Are you with me? We need an early rain baptism of the Spirit of God. And we need a latter rain baptism of the Holy Spirit of God. And the Bible makes it very plain to give us this day our daily what? Christ said, I am the bread of life. Ellen White says that the Spirit of God is the personal presence of Christ in the soul. So what we must understand when we receive the baptism of the Spirit, through the receiving of the bread of life, by receiving of the power of the Holy Spirit, 
which according to Luke 11, we receive by asking what happens. We are allowing the personal presence of Jesus to dwell in the soul to where his victorious life is lived out through us. Wherefore, his character is reproduced in us, whereby we are enabled to live a sinless life. Yes. Manuscript Release, Volume 2, page 26 says, I would that we had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and this we must have. Let me read that one more time. I would that we had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and this we must have before we can reveal, watch this right here, Perfection of life and character. The Bible says, be therefore what? Even as thy Father which is in heaven is what? Through faith we receive the perfection of Christ's life. Are you with me? His life is a righteous, perfect life. When we receive Jesus as our personal Savior, we receive his perfection. And then his perfection is imparted within us by the power of the Spirit, whereby his character perfection, hallelujah, will be revealed in our lives. So therefore we can be perfect even as our Father which is in heaven is perfect. Whereby every thought and feeling is in obedience to the power of Christ. Are you with me? Therefore temptations lose their power. And as Ellen White says, sin becomes hateful to us by the power of his righteousness. And all we got to do is receive it by faith. And when we receive it by faith, guess what happens? I'm going to show you what's going to happen when we receive the righteousness of Jesus. Let me read this one more time. I would that we all had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this we must have before we can reveal perfection of life and character. I would that every member of the church would open the heart to Jesus saying, quote, come in, heavenly guests, and abide with me, unquote. A very simple prayer. It's not so much how long you pray, it's what you're saying in your prayers. Are you with me? So what happens is simply I tell my students at Oakwood, every day you must seek the baptism of the Spirit of God because without the anointing of the Spirit, we have no power to get to heaven. In order to get to this uh, retreat, we needed a lot of gas. Am I right or wrong? And you had some money in reserve to make sure you had some more gas money. Are you with me? But many of us are trying to get to heaven, which is eons and miles away without any spiritual gasoline. And that spiritual gasoline comes through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Now watch this right here. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 2, let's turn quickly. Let's look at Galatians chapter um, 2 and verse, let's look at Philippians chapter 3, excuse me, Philippians chapter 3. Now watch this right here. We're talking about righteousness by faith and the latter rain. Now brothers and sisters, we need to pray for this righteousness, amen? amen. And it's very simple. Somebody say it's very simple. Yes. It's very simple. The Bible makes it very plain. Without faith, it is impossible to do what? So faith is a component in receiving this righteousness. The Bible says in Philippians 3 verse 9, do you have it? And being found where? That's the only safe place in the last days. The only safe place is to be in Christ. But how do you get into Christ? The Bible says, not having my own what? We must repudiate. Somebody say repudiate. I mean, we must not trust in our own righteousness. We cannot trust in how many degrees we have or how many prayers we prayed or how much vegetarian meat, I mean, vegetarian food we have eaten. Are you with me? We got to trust completely in the blood and the life of Christ. Are you with me? Which will produce everything else. Amen. But watch this right here. Being found in him, not having my own righteousness. Now, stop. But let's stop right here on this right here. Ellen White says in the book, Testimonies and Ministers, page 456, what is justification by faith? She says it is the work of God laying the glory of man in the dust and doing for him which he cannot do of his own self. So why are we trying to work our way into justification? when we must repudiate our own righteousness and claim by faith his righteousness, which is of, of the law, the Bible says, but that which is, the, not our right, but not his righteousness, his, our righteousness, but that which is through the faith of who? Remember the faith of Jesus in Revelation chapter 14? The faith of Jesus or the faith of Christ is the righteousness which is of God by what? By faith. So what happens is simply is this right here. By faith in Christ's righteousness, I'm in him. Are you with me? So what happens is how do we receive this righteousness? Watch this right here. Romans chapter 5. Romans the fifth chapter. See, Jesus lived a perfect life. Am I right or wrong? He lived a righteous life, not only as our substitute, but as our example. Do you understand what we're talking about? So what happens is simply is this right here. 
what we must do is we must understand how to receive this righteousness. Now, the Bible makes it very plain in the book of uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Do you have it? The Bible says, For if by one man's what? Death reigned by one, much more they which do what? Receive by faith. Talk to me, somebody. Receive the gift of what? Grace. Now watch this right here. He that receive, the Bible says, abundance of what? Grace and of the gift of what? So watch this right here. You receive grace, not just saving grace. You receive enabling grace. Watch this right here. I believe that when you receive the righteousness of Christ, you receive not only his righteous life by faith, but you also receive the abundance of grace, which is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? So we receive the enabling grace to keep us from sinning. Are you with me? Jesus said that blessed are they which do hunger and do thirst after what? Hello. For the Bible says, for they shall be what? Filled. So when, when are we filled? Through faith. The Bible says in the book of Acts 15 that, we re, uh, that our hearts are purified by faith. So if you have a dirty heart, ask God, Lord, purify my heart. I receive it in Jesus' name. And your heart is purified. You receive the abundance of grace. Then you receive the gift of what? Of righteousness, the Bible says. Whose righteousness do you receive as a free gift? Christ. So therefore, I have eternal life. Amen. How do I know I have eternal life? Because by faith I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. I can't go by by how I feel, how things have looked in the past. I can't look at my track record because it's going to be very spotty. Are you with me? But it's spotless right now through faith and its righteousness. For anybody right now who's been worrying about how to achieve perfection, you don't achieve perfection in one leap fall, but you, you achieve perfection through faith and its righteousness. Are you with me? So by faith, I am righteous. By faith in him, I am perfect only in him. But hold it now, Christ gives me the abundance of grace so I can grow in perfection. Are you with me? Let's look at the book of Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And Ellen White says this is the message that must go forth with a loud cry and, and, and attended by the Holy Spirit without measure. Mark chapter 4. Now we're talking about perfection of character now. Now you receive the righteousness of Christ. Now watch this right here. Oh, yeah, Mark chapter, I'm going to tell you in a second. Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. Now, watch, watch this right here. Testimonies to the Church, volume 6, page 86. Testimonies, volume 6, page 86. Impress upon all the necessity of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the sanctification of the church, so that there will be living, growing, fruit-bearing trees of the Lord's planting. Hallelujah. And I tell you, so much more to quote from, and I'm going to um, close with a certain statement at the end of this message. But watch this right here. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 26, the Bible says, and he said, so is the kingdom of what? But didn't Christ say the kingdom of heaven is at hand? And Luke, he said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So when you receive Christ through the righteousness by faith message, the kingdom comes within you. Now watch this right here. If the kingdom is within you, that means you're no longer the master. That means he is the master. He is the Lord of your heart. So therefore, when temptation hits your mind, you got to let the Lord Jesus Christ answer the door. Are you with me? And therefore, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Why? Because of the righteousness that's within each and everybody's heart. Verse 26 says, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed where? The Bible says the seed is the word. Are you with me? So by reading the word of God, guess what happens? God is planting seeds of righteousness in our spirits. Wherefore, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not what? Sin against thee. So it's the word of God that keeps us from falling. So faith in his word is what makes us righteous and keeps us righteous. The Bible says the word of God, that the whole world, the whole universe is upheld by the word of his power. So if God can uphold the whole universe, can he uphold you in this world of sin? Watch this right here. And he should sleep, verse 27, and rise night and day. And the seeds should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. How it be growing in Christ? We don't, we don't see the, 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 the workings of it, but we know what's going on. Am I right or wrong? So watch this right here. The Bible says, for the earth bringeth forth, verse 28, fruit of herself, first the what? The blade. So what happens is when you receive the Christ as your personal Savior, 
The seed of the word of God is within you. By faith, you are accounted righteous as if you had not never sinned. Are you with me? You stand, Ellen G. White says, in the perfection of his sinlessness. That means that when God sees you, he sees you as if you have never committed one sin. And you got to accept that through faith. And you got to also believe that his seed is working within you, germinate, and germinating and growing in you. That's what the early reign experience is all about. Are you with me? To where you're growing in perfection. That's why we're told in inspiration that at every stage of our development, our lives can become perfect. Are you with me? So what happens, you may be on stage one, but you're perfect on stage one. Are you with me? I may be on stage whatever, and I can be perfect on whatever stage I'm on. But whatever stage we're on, as long as we are in Christ, are you with me, abiding in him, guess what? We are represented perfect in Christ while we are growing in perfection. Are you with me? And I never trust in my own righteousness. Are you with me? I trust in what he is doing, for, what he's done for me on Calvary, and I trust in his intercession in the most holy place. Are you with me? To where Ellen White says in the book uh, Faith and Works, page 107, that Christ is in the holy of holies, where he ceases not to present his people moment by moment complete in himself. If Christ be for us, who in the world can be against us? Did you know that if you're in Christ, that Jesus is presenting you moment by moment complete in him? We are told in Selected Messages, book one, that we're not to worry about what God thinks about us. She said, don't worry about what God thinks about you. All you need to worry about is what God thinks about Christ. And if you are in Christ, you are accepted, Ephesians says, in the beloved. You sit together with him in heavenly places. You are in the most holy place, having that most holy place experience. The Bible says, first, the blade, that early rain falls upon you. Every day you receive that baptism. Every day you pray for the Spirit of God. Every day you seek his face. Every day you say, Lord, fall afresh upon me. When you do that, guess what happens? You spring up in the blade. You stop cursing, are you with me? You stop sinning, are you with me? You start growing in the graces of God. And what happens is when you're following the reforms, it becomes a delight. It's not a burden. And let me tell you, I heard a story one time of a lady who followed every reform you had in the book and told my boy, she said, you know what, I know I'm going to hell. I'm like, wow. Hey, that could have discouraged probably somebody who was looking up to that person. But the reason why she was saying that is because she was trusting in her own righteousness. Are you with me? And what we got to do is we got to claim that righteousness, which is by what? And the Bible calls it a garment of salvation. The Bible calls it a robe of righteousness. And the Bible says that this garment, this robe is pure white. And when you receive anything that's white, you want to make sure that you don't get it dirty. Are you with me? So what happens is when you receive his righteousness by faith, keep the garment clean by not going close to the pig pen. Because you know when it gets spotted, baby, you got to take that thing back to the cleaners, right? First the blade, then the scripture says the ear. Are you with me? The second stage of spiritual growth, and then after that, the full corn in the ear. So watch this right here. We all grow by the power of the Spirit of God and through faith in Christ's righteousness in different stages. Are you with me? And as long as we abide in him, we are presented perfect before the Father, and therefore by clothed in, being clothed in his perfection, we can have faith that we are saved from sin and its penalty. Are you with me? And we're being saved daily by the power of sin to be saved at last when it comes to the clouds of glory. Look at verse 29. But, somebody say but. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately, watch this right here, it says he doesn't even delay. He says immediately he, talking about God, putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come. How do we get there? We get there through faith in his righteousness. Let's go back over this, then we're going to close. What happens is simply as this, by faith we receive his righteousness. We are counted righteous. By faith we receive the spirit of God. Therefore, we're growing in him, the ear, the corn, the blade, etc. Then we're ready for translation. How do we get there? You got to pray. That's what this prayer ministry is about. Ellen G. White says in closing, the heart must be emptied of every defilement and cleansed for the indwelling of the spirit. It was by the confession and forsaking of sin, by earnest prayer and consecration of themselves to God, that the early disciples prepared for the outpouring of the Spirit of God on the day of Pentecost. And she says that must be done right now. We must cleanse ourselves. And what we're going to do, we're going to kneel for prayer. But before we do that, here are our instructions. you got to believe, amen, amen, that God is able to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Whatever defilement it is in your life, ask God to cleanse you from it. 
by faith, no matter what your past has been, no matter what my past has been, no matter what you may think or know about me, it doesn't matter to me because all I know is my record is clean in heaven. Are you with me? Make your record clean. Ask God to clean your slate. Ask God to empty yourself, and then he can fill you with his spirit. Let us kneel for prayer. And in your heart, we're going to give you a couple of seconds for you to make it right with the Lord. Amen? And we're going to ask God to anoint our day with his spirit. Father in heaven, we come before you on bending knees, asking for your forgiveness, Lord. We've trusted in our own righteousness, Lord God. But Father in heaven, not anymore. Father in heaven, we ask that you will forgive us of every sin. Purify us right now of every defilement. We believe that right now we are cleansed. We don't believe in evolution, Lord. We believe in creation. You spoke and it was, so therefore we receive by faith the robe of your son's righteousness, Lord God. So by faith, we know that right now we are clothed. Now, Lord, we need you to do more than just clothe us, Lord. We need you to baptize us right now with the Holy Spirit. Give us a early and latter rain baptism right now of your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Empty our hearts of everything that will hinder you from answering this prayer. And may every demon in hell be cast out right now. So, Lord, we want to pray for our meetings. And this whole campground, anoint the whole place with the early and latter rain. So when people drive by and come on these grounds, they will feel the anointing, Lord. And bless everything. Multiply the food, Lord God. Multiply everything. May this day be in you. So, Lord, thank you for saving us, Lord God. Thank you for giving us your grace. For, Lord, we're not going to disappoint you. Give us power to live a sinless life. Be with our thoughts and feelings this day. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have received the righteousness of Christ, welcome to a new walk in Jesus. Maranatha. <laughs>